What's up? Happy Saturday morning. Welcome to Insurance Influencers, where we find freaking power players and influencers in our industry. And we bring them on, we get to know them, we take a deep dive, and they share knowledge with you. These are two of the craziest freaking dudes in our industry. You're going to love them. I love them already. If you weren't at 8% Nation 2019, then you missed out because they were dropping some bombs from stage. Dude, Scott Howell, Bradley Flowers, welcome on, gents. Thank you. Man, thank you so much for having us, Cody. It, it means a lot to be here. Love what you guys are doing. I really enjoyed I, I'll tell you a story about Cody. Uh, I got to 8% Nation, flew there, ran to a sound check real quick. Didn't think I would really get a chance to speak to you at 8% Nation. And you took the time to come on stage where I was up there trying to figure out exactly what we were going to do. You took the time to come in there, and you were extremely busy. I know that, and 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 spend some time with me, and that meant a lot to me for you to spend five or ten minutes with me, just just chopping it up for a few minutes. I really appreciate you, dude. Thank you, buddy. It was an honor to have you guys on stage doing a live podcast from stage, and and you guys did super well. Uh, one of the biggest hits of the whole thing, man. It was great. You know, I, I was telling somebody, we spoke at a, a big eye event in Tennessee this weekend, and we, we spoke to about 50 carriers and brokers, and then we spoke to about the same number of young agents there. And uh, I, have a really, I have a really hard time gauging how well I do in an event like that because uh, I'm, I, sometimes I'm like, you know, I feel like I did well yeah. or that we did well. But I also don't want to be the guy that goes on stage at the American Idol uh, trial, and he's like, ah, and I get, I'm, my mom says I'm the best singer in the world. Do you guys agree? And they're like, no, don't ever sing again. Go, go find something else to do today. So, I, 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 you know, I, I think anytime I go on stage and come off and people ask me how I feel like I did, I just, I just have no, you know, it's, the only people I know to ask are the people that were there to determine whether or not they got something yep. out of it. And that's really what matters, right? Exactly. Well, it was, it was good, man. It was, uh, you know what I love about you guys is you, you work well off of each other really well. Um, you're not afraid to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> you know, you, you do your thing, you know, you're not looking, you just, you just, you know what I mean? You guys are just, you're authentic. You're genuine. You're yourselves. You have fun. Well, there's no agenda. You know what I mean? Like we're exactly. Just, we're we're just we're just doing what we know know to do. You know, we're sticking to our mission, and and that's that. You know. You know, every every time we have a podcast episode, I would say ninety percent of the time, one of the things I say is I'm no different than the two hundred fifty thousand insurance agents listening to this right now. Mm. I, I have the same problems. I have the same issues, I, uh, both in my personal life and my business life, and um, I, I, I have the inability to ever perceive myself as being anything more than they are. And yeah. maybe that's a mistake on my part. Maybe that's a mistake on my part. Maybe I should feel like I'm, you know, this podcast host and all this other stuff. But uh, I, I don't know. There's something inside of me inside my personality that just does not allow me to uh to feel that way i just don't totally totally well uh, for, for those that don't know these two gentlemen do the insurance guys podcast it's probably or i mean it's it's got to be the most popular insurance podcast in the world correct you know i mean there's a lot of good ones out there yeah uh, there's i mean a lot of good ones. yeah we have I, mean, I can't speak for itself yeah. you know you dude can, you guys you guys had freaking Gary Vaynerchuk on, for crying out loud. Come on. Come on. Yeah. But I, I'll let that speak for itself. I think uh, yeah. just like everything else in life, whether it's a television show, movie, numbers speak for itself. Uh, all I know is Bradley and I get a lot of positive comments and people asking for advice relative to the insurance industry. And for us, that's really what it's about. We don't look at numbers. We don't look at – somebody asked us for our um, our numbers a couple of weeks ago, and we intentionally don't look at that stuff simply because we don't want to get into that thing. Not, not even – I mean, it's just – it doesn't matter. You know, it really like doesn't. All, all – and it's, you know – 
I was on a panel at a, a, a local event here, the Public Relations Council of Alabama, and that was me and other people. And of course, they were wanting analytics and you know what analytics do you track and this, 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 that, the other, and, uh -huh. and that's more of a yeah, yeah. harder thing. Right. Uh, I, you know, I, I was like, look, the literally with the podcast, especially the only thing I track is impact. Yeah. Like. How many people are reaching out? How many people are saying, oh my God, you changed my life. Oh my God, I, I implemented this or, or, Hey, you're, you're an idiot. Like what, it, that's, that's the only thing that, that, that I'm, you know, it's, it's like the whole, you know, you, I saw a Facebook post this week from a guy that ran one of these like spammy entrepreneur page that all they do is share other people's content and make it their own. And he had 6,800 likes on an Instagram post and that many comments. And I'm like, you know, that's this vanity metrics, you know, like let's yeah. look at engagement, let's look at conversion, let's look at that kind of thing. You know, we could have, we could have a thousand listeners to our podcast, but if 800 of them are reaching out to us, that's much more important than having 250,000 and 10 people reaching out. I think that's a, uh, I think that's a good thing for anyone that's ever wanting to start one too. It's like, if you're doing it for the listeners and nobody listens, you're going to stop doing it. If you're doing it for the listeners and you get a bunch of listeners, it's probably going to go to your head. You know, you guys are genuine, you're authentic, you're great personalities, and you don't care. You know, you, you, you love doing it. You know, secretly for me, and I've told Bradley this before, I've shared this before, for me, it's a little bit of a mini vacation to come mm. down here because, like, I've got my wife here with me this, this week. Uh, we left all the kids at the house. Um, you know, we get to spend some time together and uh, and, we, and get away from the office. And it seems like I'm down here every week, but I was telling a buddy of mine, uh, my best friend from high school called me with an insurance question, uh, who, by the way, didn't even have his insurance on me. It's with State Farm, but I digress. <laughs> um, he called me the night before last, and I was saying to him, I said, you know, it feels like I go to Mobile every week, but in reality, I really don't go down there. Uh, but maybe once every two or three months. And one of the things I'll tell your listeners, wow. people watching your podcast right now, and it's something that I got from Lewis Howe, who has one of the biggest podcasts in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Lewis, Lewis is the one that came up with the idea that kind of struck, struck a chord with me that, hey, if you're really going to do this, uh, you need to batch file your podcast so that you don't feel like, you know, you're just doing it all the time. Well, and, and it's hard too, you know, like I respect you because you're a guy that I, I can tell you make content a priority, right? Creating that daily content. But mm -hmm. if you're like, like a, most people, it's hard, even myself, you know, I had this idea I was going to do a local podcast here every, and we were going to do it weekly. I did one episode and never did it again, yeah. you know, whereas when you batch them, it, it allows you to be consistent. And that's one thing that I think we've done really well mm -hmm. is that we consistently release one every Wednesday at 7 a.m. 8 a.m. Eastern we release a podcast wow. and it's because we batch that we're able to do that if we were doing weekly hands down one week a month something would come up and oh, we yeah. wouldn't be able to do it you right know? right so so one of the things I'll tell you Cody and I'm speaking directly to you not to your audience right now unless they want to start a podcast two things I'm gonna say do not stop I don't care what happens I don't care and barring a nuclear holocaust where all the power grids in the United States of America go out, do a podcast, 50 episodes, and release it at the same time every week. So here comes my second tip for you. Where we are right now in the world of podcasting and, and technology is everybody has a podcast. Yeah. Podcasting has gone from when Bradley and I started, it was kind of in its infancy stage in some ways. Insurance especially. Yeah, well, and every, just everything. And then the last two years, every human being on the – I just helped – one of, a really good friend of mine who I played college basketball with who started a uh, a basketball podcast. That's cool. And I and I it's, it's pro one uh, and he's ha he's got some of the biggest names in the world of professional basketball on there. Wow. And I basically walked him step by step on how to start a podcast. Now let me tell you where I'm going with that. Because of the uh, amount and number of podcasts that are out there now that people can listen to. It is, it is probably most important that you have that consistency that you're putting that podcast out every week because 
if you decide that, hey, we're going to take a month and a half off from podcasting, there's so many podcasts out there that you're going to lose hundreds or thousands of listeners, and now they're watching something else or listening to something else, and you may never get those people back. It's true. So those are the two big things I would I would suggest to you as you're going to know how many episodes you guys are on right now. But like a dozen, um, like a dozen, yeah. Yeah, you got, you got to get to fifty, and you got to do it at the same time every week, or you're going to lose. You're going to lose. And, and even Johnny, our producer, does that from the beginning. Yeah. You know, he's like something strange is going to happen at fifty, and that's where you kind of really st- start seeing. I don't know if it's wow. something with the some of the algorithms on the podcast platforms, mm-hmm. or if it's just you finish. You've built up that core fan base, and then you have the second fan base, which are the people that listen every now and then. Right. And then you start getting a, a wider scale of guests where you may have a guest on that appeals to an additional, you know, we had Gary on. I mean, you can imagine how many people listen to just that one episode and have never listened to another one. So you get you get kind of those three kind of segmentations of listeners at that mm-hmm. point. It's, and that's when you can really, you know, and, it, as, and as a matter of fact, you know, 10 minutes ago, we recorded our 100th episode. So we're, Boom. we're down. Yeah. Boom. Congrats, gents. That's awesome. <laughs> so, 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 you know, tell me what questions you guys have got for me today. What you think your audience would like to hear, and we'll be happy to answer any of them that you got, man. I love it, man. Well, dude, that's why I love um, you guys. Are you guys are so good at this now? You can tell you've done it so much that like. There was no agenda here either. I'm like, I'm going to jump on camera and it's going to be great. So Sydney, Sydney Rowe was just on our podcast a few minutes ago. And then at the very end of it, she goes, man, you, you asked some incredibly good questions. Said, well, Sydney, I've done it a hundred times. I've done it a hundred times, Sydney. That's it. That's it. Well, something I thought of that you guys just mentioned, because you gave, you gave several tips for someone that would want to start a podcast. Uh, what's each of your favorite podcasts to listen to? Not, not of your own, another podcast that's not yours. Yeah. So, so it would, it would depend. It's like asking me, you know, people throughout your life ask you, what is the, your favorite movie you've ever seen? Yeah. And my response to that is first, you got to tell me what genre we're talking about. Right. You know, is it a horror movie? Comedy? Say say it's comedy. Say it's comedy. What is that? Uh, uh, probably my favorite comedy of all time was Raising Arizona with Nicolas Cage. Do you remember uh, that? From back yeah. in, uh, that movie just owned me when it came out. I, I need to that. go watch it. I, I don't. Yeah, Raising Arizona, Christmas Vacation, uh, old school, old school because it, it reminded me of my friends and the stupid shit we've done. Um, those <laughs> Step Brothers was phenomenal. Yes. Phenomenal. Um, but yeah, th- those would be three of the big ones for mine, me. Mine would be the campaign. That was, <laughs> yeah, that was incredible. Um, you know, I, I got this question this week. That, what are some, that was one of, we did a Q and A with uh, the president or the CEO of, of the Big Eye of Tennessee, and that was one question she asked. Yeah, and mine, mine's going to be. I I don't listen to a lot of insurance stuff. If you can imagine that, um, I yeah. like a Rogan podcast just because I like learning a lot of like he's not scared to ask really sensitive questions. I just like learning about. I just saw today he had Edward Snowden on. I cannot wait to enter that to listen. Um, another one, if you have to be in the mood, is called Business Person. Hmm. And to give you an example of their first episode, and so they do seasons. Um, have you seen Business Wars? I have Jeff not. Roy actually mm-hmm. recommended uh-huh. that to me. Um, and so, for example, the first one was Netflix versus Blockbuster. And so there's a, a narrator tell a story, and then they have actors doing voices like of the actual conversation. So it's more of it's like a TV show in podcast form, mm-hmm. documentary TV show. It's really, really cool just to get like some, I pick up business advice from it, but that's really not what it's meant for. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for me, I would say if the, if, in the insurance space, um, Mike Stromso's UPP podcast for property and casualty agents. That's a, it's so 
Scott Howell, it's not even funny because you literally have to get a pen and paper out when you listen to that podcast because he gives actual wow. steps. Very, very tangible advice. Very yeah. tangible advice. It's everything he says on that podcast. I'm a, yeah. I'm a Mike Strom's. They are in the middle of their UPP. They go to the Unstoppable Profit Producer uh, workshop they do out in, I think it's in San Diego this week. But Mike just gives tangible advice on, on people, processes, and promotion. That mm. a lot of fluff. It's just get your damn pen and paper out and get ready to write some yeah. shit down. And it's not it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. No, it no, might no. be. It's a little bit. It, it leans a little bit more towards the, the traditional ways right. of doing this. Right. But Mike is he has a way of tying it back together to this day and age. You know, right. and it, it's a very good podcast. If you're like, man, I just need to listen to something that's not a lot of fluff. And I'm gonna get some things. To mm. do. Yeah, 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 right. That's good. Right. Uh, love, what, 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 love Rogan. Love uh, Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer. They have two bears, one cave. That is a hilarious two, pod. two bears, bears, one cave. Hilarious podcast. Some of your guests will be extremely offended, but it is absolutely. <laughs> you, 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 you like. Uh... I can tell you like you're a comedy fan. You like to laugh. You know. You... I do. I love That's it. good. I love it. Yeah. Scott, one time at a Halloween party, mm. dressed up as Cousin Eddie for Christmas vacation. Yeah. I look, look, does that not fit? Perfect. I had the robe, the whole, <laughs> the exact costume. When he was out there and said, you know, wave, hey, shitter's full. Had that yeah. exact costume on the whole thing. Oh. Yeah. Oh, now, that's Halloween good. Halloween is my favorite holiday because I love to dress up and costumes and things and I just absolutely in fact I'll give you a little insight um, so in order to differentiate ourselves from other insurance agencies out there you know we always talk about how to differentiate yourselves yeah. so what we do for Halloween at my agency is, is our agency staff dresses up as a group as a group like some group thing that we do. Last year it was Toy Story. And I was I was Andy, and and then we have a professional photographer. Oh, Woody. Was I? Oh, sorry, I was Woody. Anyway, we 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 dress up and then have a professional photographer come take a picture, and we use that picture for our Christmas card. That's our Christmas card we send out. Okay. I love doing it. The, it's fantastic. Like you had the pie chart. And it said, you know, what, what did it say? Something like, how great is I protect customer service? And yeah. it was like, awesome in blue. And then he had this one little strip of yellow, and it said, awesome in yellow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, try, we try to get kind of creative with stuff like that. But, yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get off on the No, channel. no, I, I love that. That's that's that, that's a good, unique thing. So, you know, the people can, like, start to think outside the box and be creative because our industry can be so stinking boring. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Well, what's your, uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. What I was just going to say, what other questions do you have for today? Yeah, I would say, uh, what would you say is like, how, how do you guys look for when you book your guest? Well, what's, what, what's kind of the, is there a, is there a science to it? Does it really matter? Well, let me, let me back up first and say that there's nobody that does a better job of booking than, than Bradley does in, in any podcast because Bradley's not afraid to ask anybody to come on the podcast. If you think of a name of somebody, he's either already invited them or he's about to invite them. Um, we are this close, this close to getting Frank Oh. It's just a matter of scheduling. Yeah. 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 I, you know what? C Cardone's office was the first place that came to mind. So that's okay. That's good. So what I would say is when we're thinking about podcast guests, the first thing you got to think of, what value is that person going to bring to this show? Mm. Yeah, if, we, if, if it's somebody that we th even think uh, uh, is going to be a little pitchy, we don't even, uh, you know, um, we, you know, in, in the beginning, we did a lot of, or we, we did a lot of selling, you know, I would type out, you know, Hey, this is our podcast here. It is on Apple. You know, we've interviewed this person, you know, a lot of like, you know, yeah. just to just break through the noise, so to speak, you know, and it was funny in the beginning, we had Tom Hegna on, mm -hmm. who's a big player in the life insurance space. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, we at the time had a, and still do have a decent 
um, uh, listener, listener base of state farm agents. And Tom is worshipped amongst state farm agents. And, and so I said, man, how in the world do you get Tom Hegna on? And I'm like, my phone. I go to Facebook and I say, hey, Tom, want to be on my pot? Like, like the guy was like, what are you, you know, you're contacting the agent. You're like going through the booking, the publicist. I'm like, I picked up my phone. I go to Facebook and I message him. The, and is, is that it? Because that, that was that was one of my next questions is how do you approach? You know what I mean? So, so. It's been 100% to the DMs. Um, slide into the DMs. Slide into the DMs. And, and you know, so, so that's kind of how we started a lot of selling. And then about, I would say 20-ish, 15, 20 episodes in, um, that's when people started reaching out. You know, now it's yeah. pretty much – a hundred percent people reaching out and saying, Hey, I want to come on. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, and we turn, we turn away more people than, than we, than we bring on. And I mean, and now we have, now we do have the publicists. I mean, on a daily basis, there's these, these publicists for people to get you on podcasts and yeah. say, okay, come see this guy on the podcast, that kind of thing. We try to stick to a lot of agents you know, I, I really like interviewing kind of the players in our space and mm -hmm. what are they, what are they going to do to, to, you know, what are they doing that we can then take and, and help other people, you know, that kind of thing. Um, with the occasional, you know, if we come across an awesome company and are able to work something out where we can say, Hey, look, this is something awesome that you guys need to know about that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and, we, and we're, we're, uh, uh, there's no process. It's just a, a matter of those few things, wouldn't you say? I would agree. Yeah. I like high energy people. I like people who have a story. I like great storytellers. I like people that can match my energy and can really, you know, chop it up while they're on the show with me. Um, so th those are the, kind, and I, and I, what I really like to do is get like one pretty big agency owner on the podcast, somebody that has a lot of experience and is very thoughtful and then follow that up with like a technology podcast so that agents learn about a new technology. We're about to, I think, go on air with Glovebox, which is a new insurance technology that's coming out. Um, and then and then in kind of scattered in between that, I like to do small agents that maybe are just, you know, small agencies that are, you know, maybe have something cool they're doing or uh, – you know, a thought leader outside of the insurance industry. We had Coach Bird on this morning. He's today's podcast that just got released. Guys like that, they're great storytellers. They have fantastic information. And a lot of times they'll say something in the podcast that makes insurance agents go, damn, I never thought of that. That's incredible. So I like those kinds of people. They're, they're, they're really a fun interview because they're real dynamic. You, you, you know, Coach Bird, you have a relationship yes. with him. Yes. I love those guys. I love them. Because they'll, they'll, they'll chop it up with you and they'll get after That's it. That's good. No, he, he, he's awesome. Yeah, he, he is. He's, he's, uh, he's high energy. He's, he's, a, he's a great coach. I, I'm definitely a big fan of Bert. I uh, really am. How, how do you uh, – now, have you thought about like a uh, – in our space, you know, you've got some big names like uh, – you guys can hear me, right? Yeah, barely. Bar you can, barely. Okay, you, you guys have heard some big names like uh, Ed Milet – Patrick Bet David, have, have you have you all approached them? Thoughts on them as a podcast? Um, yeah, I, I've listened to both of those guys. You know, I think I, I really would love to have Ed Milet. I haven't even really yeah, really he'd thought be about a great, that, he'd know? be a great podcast. He and I would get along like peas and carrots. Yeah, I'd love to have him on there, dude. He, he's I, I, he, he's intense. I love it, man. He's strong. He's real good. You know what, Andy Frisella. So Andy Frisella is the only person I've ever reached out to that has not got, that somehow has not gotten back in some way. Mm. I don't even know if Scott knows that. Like I, even Gary, even, you know, Frank Kern, like Andy is the only one that I haven't been able to kind of get to the person, you know, and, the, and, and, and to be in, in, you know, in their defense, it was actually early. I mean, I think we were on our second or third episode when I reached out to him. So that was more of a shoot for the stars kind of thing. That's good. Is, is it a? Uh, is, is there some follow up involved? If you want to, if you want to grab a big name like that, is there some follow up involved? Oh, dude, Gary took a year and a half. Whoa! <coughs> and, and a year and a half, and in that time frame, I did Agent Twenty Twenty One. 
I had him at my conference. We had dinner together. All of that happened before we were ever able to even get close to a yes. So a lot of good things had to happen in that time frame. What, what, what was something that you did that uh, helped you get someone like him on the podcast? Like, was there a critical move or a Here's big you've got to do. You've got to figure out, and this is, this is, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, you've got to figure out who the influential person is in the organization. And it goes back to the whole like life insurance, sell an employee benefit. You've got to figure out who either the gatekeeper is or the influential person in that space. It's, it's, it goes back to the bread and butter of insurance, you know, um, you know, and that's, that's really the, the key is, you know, figure out who that is that has, that has, that, that has access to the calendar, you know, yeah. um, I spoke at a conference one time that, uh, and I'm not going to say which one it is. It wasn't yours. Um, <laughs> um, I had another influential person in the insurance space hating on me on Twitter without using my name saying something to the effect of, you know, name me one insurance speaker at this conference that has more than 2000 Twitter followers. Well, he, and he was talking about me. I was the only person that was on the docket at that time. And I'm like, don't criticize me because I was tactful enough to figure out who the person was that was running the conference behind the scenes, not the face, but the behind the scene person. Don't criticize me because I was strategic enough to figure out who that is. And you just expect to tweet a bunch and somebody's going to ask you to do it, you know? Like, don't fault somebody for having more tenacity than what you have. Mm, that's good. That's good. Dude, this, I love it, man. I love it. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to add as someone that I view as an influencer in our industry, looking to help people, looking to, you know, for, maybe from a, from a podcast, personal brand, um, content perspective, anything else you guys want to add, some final tips for anybody that's looking to do something like that? Well, I, I think you've got to get your, you know, figure out what you're good at, first of all. And, um, you know, put a lot of content out on social media and do it in a way that has zero expectation of anything in return, but just wanting to help people. And that doesn't, you know, I, I've been, I've been do, saying this for a year now, but if I had it to do over again, I love Bradley so much and I do anything for him but I would have probably started a podcast in the niche markets that we sell commercial insurance mm -hmm. because instead of, you know, the way we did this is really mind numbing in the fact that we're, we're just talking to other insurance agents. Yeah. If, if, if I was going to get in the podcasting world and I was in the insurance space, I would be talking to about, my niche market, whatever it was that I was but selling. Here's the key with that. Like, don't, you know, don't do a pod. If your niche is apartments, don't do a podcast about apartment insurance. Mm -hmm. Do a podcast about apartments. Right. Bring influential people in. Right. And a byproduct of that is they're going to, look, we do a podcast to the insurance industry. I sell insurance from that podcast. Right. You know, um, somebody asked me the other day, like Bradley, you know, social media is great, but like, I don't really think you can sell commercial insurance on the PC side. I'm like, dude, do a podcast in Roanoke, Virginia, wherever you are, the Roanoke business podcast, interview other business people about their business. Yeah. Video it, record it. You've got your podcast. You've got your video, not to mention 80 little one minute clips you can put out there. Okay. Other business owners, are going to watch it. They're going to know your name. The business owner you interviewed is mm. going to feel guilted into letting you quote their commercial insurance. If you ask for a deck page, after you've given them free advertising, other businesses are going to reach out to you. Swear to God, this is going to happen. Yep. Other businesses are going to reach out to you and they're going to say, Hey Bradley, can I really please, can you interview me on your podcast? It'd be great advertising for your business. Yeah, Rick, the cost is I need your deck page. Mm. You will sell commercial insurance on Facebook, on social yeah. media. Like, why does, why, I mean, you know, so, and why am I not doing that? Yeah, I know, right? So, <laughs> you know. So, we got a guy in Tupelo, Mississippi doing that. He, uh, actually, 
percent nation. That's where we met him. Yeah, at. he yeah. was at eight percent nation uh, at your at your conference. Uh, he had reached out to us before then, though. Yeah, and uh, you know, Bradley and I, I thought it was a terrific idea he had, but we uh, we encouraged him to. Uh, we we each had a little, few different ideas, but it was something to w where he basically became, you know, learn more about Tupelo, Mississippi, start a Facebook yeah. page, start interviewing businesses, the local businesses. You know, mm. you, you ask a good question, and there's a, there's a, that's a long answer, and it takes a lot of different parts to that. I think yeah. to be an influencer, you got to have the consistency the way Bradley does. I don't have that consistency. Uh, being on social media every day, posting great content. You got to have a platform like a podcast that that kind of gets your name out there in the industry. And if you do it long enough and you have a consistency, and here's the big key: you post great content, whether it's a podcast or on social media. Eventually, not gonna happen in a week, not gonna happen in a month, but eventually, over a year, two, three, four, five you'll start gaining some traction and, 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 and you may, may have some opportunities. Here's the thing too, man, is Joe Rogan is this generation's David Letterman. Absolutely. He's this generation's yeah. Johnny Carson. Like you're going, you could legit, like in a, I'm like, I'm looking at Sarah land, right? There's 14,000 people in the town that my agency's in. Like I could be the news station for you, you, anybody could be the news station for that town Absolutely. based off that podcast, you know, look at it that way. You know, Hey, I'm not, I'm not going to, uh, to, to talk about my agency. I'm just going to talk about relevant events going on in the community and interview people, you right, know? Right, things right. like that. And it's going to drive traffic back to your agency. Everybody's going to know, you know, mm. uh, become, 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 become your hometown's next. I like that. I love that. Dude, that, that was some really, really good ideas. I'm telling you what, if someone doesn't take action on what we just heard, they're missing out because that was strong. Listen, I don't care if you're selling life, disability, PNC, that doesn't matter what product you're selling. And this is a, this is a Scott Howell right here too, okay? Nobody else has ever said this, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the first. I was driving down the road last week and I was thinking about Bradley and I was thinking about the insurance industry and, and I got to thinking about it and I said, you know, the most clear and concise way that I can say this to people is that no matter what product you sell in the insurance industry in your, in your town or the city that you live in, you need to be that local politician that's running for the school board or probate judge or the circuit judgeship, you know, those guys and girls that do that for about six months, all you see is their signs, they're, they're, they're running commercials, they're doing social media, and then, and then the, they the disappear. And then the election's over and they're gone. But, but if you treat this thing like you're a local person running for office and just, work like that all the time to get your name out there, you, you're yeah. going to bring some business in the door. There, there's no way you can. And people will probably ask you to run office later. Say that again. And, and people will probably ask you to run for office later, even though you didn't intend on doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And don't do that's, that. That's Just great. be the guy who like has influence on the politicians. Right. You know? There right. you go. This computer's about to die. So, Dude, you guys are awesome, man. Hey, they, they, can, they can download Insurance Guys podcast on iTunes, right? In anywhere podcasts anywhere. are, search the name it. Scott Howell or Bradley Flowers or Insurance or Gary V Insurance, it will come up. Yeah. I love we it. We love you. Thank you guys for being on. Hey, go listen to these guys, the Insurance Guys podcast. They're influencers in the industry. Thanks for watching the show.